Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss an extremely important anniversary in astronomy. It's been exactly 100 years since Edwin Hubble officially confirmed that the universe out there basically exists. But in order to understand the importance of this anniversary, and of course the importance of this discovery, we first have to take a look at a brief history of astronomy, starting with the famous Galileo Galilei, the father of modern astronomy or maybe even the father of modern science. And one of his achievements back in 1610 was basically the use of his newly invented telescope in order to show evidence that the entire night skies were actually filled with a huge number of extremely faint objects. Very, very faint stars of different sizes, with some of these stars even appearing in different shapes and different colors. So he was basically the first to confirm that the night skies is not just a bunch of sparkling stars we see with the naked eye, it's also a lot of different stars that are basically invisible unless you have a telescope and even objects that nobody knew existed until that point. And since his discovery, for three centuries, astronomers continuously discovered more and more objects and more importantly, finally we were able to explain what they're actually looking at instead of relying on mythology or some kind of a religious interpretation. And approximately 150 years later, by late 1700s, this wonderful person the British astronomer William Herschel was one of the first to confirm and also to catalog very bizarre patchy objects that he basically referred to as nebula. One of the videos in the description talks about various shapes of nebula we've discovered so far, but he essentially was the first to map the Milky Way and to catalog thousands of these objects and even thousands of different clusters of stars, basically confirming the existence of these very bizarre and previously unknown clouds. And intriguingly enough, because this is the age of the internet, you can even find his paper and his catalog online and download it as a PDF file. This link in the description literally shows you the study from 1786. It doesn't have pictures, but it does have coordinates for a lot of different objects. And around the same time, the famous French astronomer Charles Messier created his own catalog, but for a slightly different reason. Messier was obsessed with comets and he wanted to discover as many comets as possible because that's basically the thing that he did. But in his experience, a lot of different objects love to photobomb his observations and he would usually be super disappointed to discover that something that looked like a comet was not a comet. And so as a result, to help other astronomers that I guess were also obsessed with comets, he created his own catalog. Today we call it the Messier catalog. Here he cataloged over 100 prominent nebula releasing the catalog in 1781, mostly focusing on objects that basically appeared cometary in shape and could maybe cause some confusion. But something that he didn't realize back then is that, eventually, his catalog is going to become super important. In case he didn't connect the dots yet, the object number 87, Messier 87, is going to become the source of this beautiful image 340 years later. But that's not really the main point here. The main point is that a lot of these astronomers were basically busy cataloging a lot of these somewhat unusual and somewhat mysterious objects, but with one single assumption that's going to remain in place for a very long time. The assumption here was that all of these objects were basically in the same galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. In other words, starting with Galileo, and for 300 years after that, all astronomers believed that everything we see in a nice case is inside one single galaxy even those very strange, very unusual shapes they referred to as nebula. But by 1800s, once the telescopes became powerful enough, a lot of astronomers started to realize that many of these nebula seem to be really, really different. For example, some of them appear to have star formation, some of them appear to be spherical in shape and even contain something in the center, and some were filled with multicolored gas. But there's one type of nebula that seemed to be kind of bizarre, yet whose shape seemed to repeat over and over. Eventually, these became known as spiral nebula. Bizarre structures that seem to be pretty much everywhere as well, but whose shape was somewhat consistent. And the most famous example was M31, Messier 31, or the Andromeda Nebula. And while by late 1800s, early 1900s, some scientists started to actually speculate that maybe, just maybe, this is not exactly what we think. As in, maybe this is not just some kind of a gas cloud, maybe this is something else something really far away, and something that's actually filled with its own stars, which became a kind of a hypothesis, one of the first in astronomy and one of the more intriguing ones. 
it became known as the island universe hypothesis. The hypothesis that these tiny nebula were basically these islands of different stars and different gas, possibly slightly farther away from the Milky Way. Unfortunately though, there was just no evidence to support this and so most astronomers completely ignored it. And the reason there was no evidence is really simple. It's extremely difficult to measure distances in space. Mostly because in order to discover how far away something is, we can either use some kind of a parallax technique or maybe focus on the brightness of these objects. Now parallax usually works for some of the closer objects like planets and maybe some of the closer stars, but for anything farther you have to rely on brightness. Yet we don't really know how bright some of these objects are supposed to be. Without knowing their true brightness, it becomes impossible to estimate how far they are. And so the question here was, was this some kind of a dim object really close to us, or was this some kind of a super bright object really far away? But that's until early 1900s. By 1910, a brilliant American astronomer, Henrietta Leavitt, who's actually working as a kind of a human computer at the Harvard College Observatory, discovered something super important. She was actually working with a lot of photographic plates, mostly measuring positions and brightness of thousands of different stars in the Milky Way. And by 1915, she actually found that some stars that seem to actually pulsate with time seem to have a very bizarre connection that nobody has noticed before. She discovered that many of these stars seem to have a relationship between period, pulse, and their maximum brightness. These stars were known as Cepheid stars and eventually became known as Cepheid variables. And interestingly, the brighter the Cepheid, the longer the period. Which eventually resulted in her forming this hypothesis. There seems to be a direct connection between maximum luminosity and the period of pulsations. She turned out to be correct. And she essentially discovered the most important tool in astronomy for many decades. This suddenly allowed us to measure distances very accurately by discovering these stars in, for example, some kind of an object out there, such as some kind of a star cluster or a nebula, and then by using this relationship, discovering how far away the entire object was. And so once you measure the period of a cepheid, calculating distance relatively accurately becomes pretty easy. But it wasn't for another 12 to 13 years that something else major would happen in astronomy once again. This time it was 1925 basically exactly 100 years from when I'm making this video. So yeah, yay, 100 year anniversary. Here there was a very young and very ambitious astronomer who began working on Mount Wilson Observatory in Southern California pretty much every single day. At the time this was the largest telescope on the planet, 100 inches across, and this young man named Edwin basically could not get enough of it. He started to produce a lot of photographic plates, and worked very hard trying to capture as many of these unusual spiral nebula as he could. And because this was such a powerful telescope, it finally allowed astronomers to see some objects they could never see before. Here this extremely high quality mirror was even able to distinguish individual stars in some really distant nebula. And so after working every single day, by the end of 1924, he finally discovered something he was actually kind of looking for. He found one of these bizarre Cepheid stars, inside one of the more famous nebula. Here's actually the picture of the photographic plate he took that was produced years later. And here, after observing the pulsations in at least one of the stars, he then discovered 11 more. So basically by 1925, he officially discovered 12 Cepheid variables inside the Andromeda nebula. And to him this was super important, because his calculations determined that the distance to this nebula was 900,000 light years much, much, much more distant than anything known at that time. And because this was an actual physical evidence scientists have been looking for for a very long time, to this astronomer Edwin, Edwin Hubble, this was a super important confirmation of the previously mentioned island universe hypothesis. And more importantly, this was a final resolution to something that happened just five years prior, the famous Great Debate. You can learn about this in one of the previous videos in the description that was actually also made for the 100 year anniversary of that. But this was a debate between Harlow Shapley and Herbert Curtis trying to argue if these unusual nebula were actual galaxies far away or just simple nebula inside the Milky Way itself. Shapley, who was a lot more famous back then, argued that all of this was inside the Milky Way and there was nothing beyond the galaxy. Curtis, a much more radical and ambitious astronomer, was trying to argue that these were actual galaxies really far. But because the debate itself was not very productive and didn't really have any evidence, at the end there was no conclusion. 
But now, five years later, Harlow Shapley received a letter from someone named Edwin Hubble. And in that letter, Hubble provided the evidence and the description confirming that this is indeed a galaxy far away and that technically Harlow Shapley lost the debate. Although because Hubble was very ambitious and also kind of liked being center of attention, before he did anything else, he also sent a copy of the letter to the New York Times. And so basically all of this was in the press way before the scientific announcement, with his paper changing cosmology literally overnight. Even though technically there was actually a mistake in it. The distance to Andromeda Nebula, which was now known as the Andromeda Galaxy, was not 900,000 light years, it was more like 2.5 million light years. That's because back then astronomers didn't actually realize there were two different types of Cepheid variables that can actually produce different types of results. Either way though, this was the end of the great debate, the official confirmation that the universe is much much bigger than we thought, and starting in January 1925, cosmology changed forever exactly 100 years ago. Or 100 years plus whenever you're watching this video. Well, the interesting enough, Hubble was actually not even done yet. While doing all these observations, he also discovered something super bizarre. He discovered that some of these spiral nebula or spiral galaxies seemed to have colors that were a lot more red than other ones. In other words, they were in longer, redder wavelengths. They were redshifted. And back then he proposed that this is probably because some of these galaxies are actually receding away or moving away from us at very high velocities. But he just could not figure out why. As a matter of fact, many galaxies he discovered seem to possess this bizarre redshift. But for decades, this remained a mystery. And that's until another astronomer, or actually a Belgian priest slash cosmologist, Georges Lemaitre, finally connected the dots and discovered that the universe is also expanding and expanding really fast. And it all started with a tiny point that eventually became known as the Big Bang. If you want to learn more about the Big Bang theory history, check out some of the previous videos about George Lemaitre in the description. And so basically, that's how it all started 100 years ago. That's how we discovered the universe, that's how we found out galaxies are galaxies and not just nebula, and it was technically done by just two people, Henrietta Swan Leavitt and Edwin Hubble. Two American astronomers that never really met each other, that used very thorough scientific method to confirm something nobody knew about and to completely transform our understanding of everything within just a decade. Although naturally the story is not finished yet. Cosmology is still advancing, it's still evolving and we still have so many unanswered questions. Which means that we'll be coming back and talking more about some of this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves me about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.